guys, hey guys, it's me, Caleb Hammer. It's me, I'm Caleb Hammer. Hi, hi. Oh no, wait, it's just it's Cat Dad. But look, he, this is Caleb Hammer. Do you guys know him? Have you seen him around? Have you ever seen this guy? He's bought, he's got like ads and stuff on Tink Tonk. He's got a bunch of sponsors and stuff. And also, it seems like he's doing a bunch of weird things here on the internet, all over. It looks like he might be one of these weirdo YouTubers that does weirdo stuff and gets away with it. Let's take a look at him. So I would never in my freaking life ever watch that guy at all in any normal circumstance, right? But my boy Dante has been sniffing this rat out for a while. And now Caleb is starting to fight dirty. Let's hear what Dante has to say. Aw, uh, did Caleb Hamlin see what we did to Waja? Got him off the internet. Is he scared that's going to happen to him? Oh. Dante here is talking about Roger Clyer, who was using TikTok to... He's this hideous monster right here, uh, who's like 75 years old, and he was playing his cute little guitar on Tink Tonk for a while in lives, and he would have thousands and thousands of people there. And then he finally, he singled out this one person, Olivia, and he got Olivia to come over and do weird lives with them. And then Olivia's apparently put her in a mental institution or something allegedly we don't know where she is but that seems kind of like the play for these kind of s traffickers you know like roger but guess what roger also is related to a nancy like not even like a little nancy he's like related to one that owned a camp of concentration but yeah, look, here's our boy Austin Russell, who owns the company Luminar, and according to Forbes, he's the world's youngest self-made billionaire. That's Austin. And then if you look over here, his uncle is that weird guy, Roger, that we just talked about. And then if you go up here, his grandpa is Heinrich Ludwig Kleier, who owned a place called Frickin' Adler Work. Look at this. Isn't this weird? This is so weird, right? You wouldn't think, I thought all the Nancys got taken care of, you know? But if you look close, it actually seems like most of them got away. Uh, like a lot of them, a ton of them. People like Roger and his family. But anyway, this was Adler work. It was a car company. It always seems like it's these car guys, you know? But anyway, this car company used slave labor during the 1930s and 40s of Germany. And then they got rid of a bunch of people. Look, here's all the victims. Thank you, Lolly. Yep, we're still going. These are all the victims of the Clyer family. Austin Russell's great grandpa or whatever. Now, I would... I would understand if this is what Dante is talking about, where <laughs> Caleb's probably scared that Dante and Nicole are looking into them, because I don't think anyone really knew this about Austin Russell before Dante and Nicole started looking into it. Roger and Austin secretly <laughs> own a company in America, and their ancestors did this. Do you see now? So I don't know why Caleb would be concerned, you know, unless he had something to hide, you know, Th those are the only people that we're looking at, you know, but I don't know. I really hope that there's not something similar because if there is, we will find it. <laughs> I promise you, Nicole is capable of anything and Dante is beautiful. <laughs> And so the way that a bunch of the rats scurried out of Nancy, Germany was through our friend Alan Dulles. And what they would do is they would go through Brazil and other places in Latin America. And then they would hang there for a while. And then after they felt the coast was clear, they'd come up to America with new names. But check out who we suspect might be Roger and Austin's family member. The ID says female, but that looks like Roger to me. <laughs> I'm just saying, that looks like a Nancy in a wig. <laughs> just saying. Or Austin's aunt was busted. <laughs> so freaking anyway. Yeah, if Caleb is worried about us looking into him the way we looked into Roger, he would only have something to worry about if he's hiding something. So let's continue with Dante. Okay, little message for you, Caleb. My video already had 50,000 views before you bought it to a million but like those views aren't real but like the people already saw it it wasn't gonna get pushed again like that video wasn't gonna go above fifty thousand. 
you really don't know how TikTok works. So what Dante here is alleging is that he all of a sudden got tons and tons of bot. I can't show you the comments because Dante had to take the video down so he doesn't lose his account because this is apparently a tactic. Uh, when people don't like what you're saying and they can't get your account deleted or whatever, what they do, especially if they have money and they're used to buying bots, you know, they will send a bunch of bots to you and then they'll report your video and say, hey, I just noticed that this one this one guy that i don't have anything against and i'm not trying to sabotage dude lolly you have to go away i'm so fucking done with um okay guys well i think i figured out that lollipop doesn't want to be fed constantly she just wants constant attention so <laughs> right now i have her in my sweatshirt but if anyone is interested in donating to the knitted anus cause uh i, <laughs> I put this papoose beluga baby papoose on our list <laughs> if anyone wants to contribute it to the cause then i could have lollipop strapped to me 24 7 which i feel like could be a good addition but yeah if you want it's in the link tree <laughs> Oh my god, dude, she's purring so loud. This is pissing me off so much that she's so happy. I hate her. I hate Lollipop. Does anyone want a cat? It's not really a cat. It's just Screecher. But yeah, can, can you guys imagine if I had Lollipop in a little papoose like that 24-7? Oh my god. But yeah, anyway, bro, what the hell were we talking about? Oh yeah, Creepy Caleb Hammer was harassing my friend Dante, I think, in my opinion, by sending bots his way to try and get his TikTok account taken down. But anyway, so yeah, so Dante is in friends only mode for right now so that he doesn't lose his TikTok account because we all have to defend ourselves and TikTok won't ever do anything because they're in on the grift, obviously. But yeah, they said, we know what you're doing right now to try and cover up these allegations. We know what has still not yet come to light. We know you're feeling hurt and distressed but let us remind you that one does not win in the end through deception, lying, and manipulation. The truth always prevails. Amen, brother. And you know what? Let's look at some of the stuff that Caleb is freaking out about right now. How about Scott Schaefer's new video that he dropped about Caleb? Whoo! Dude, Scott Schaefer is a freaking real one for this, and now I completely understand why Caleb is freaking out. Caleb Hammer might sue me for this video, and that isn't clickbait at all. <laughs> He's already threatened legal action against me multiple times before I even released this video, <laughs> simply for looking into a story he doesn't want covered and not immediately accepting his point of view. <laughs> now, to me, that seems very suspicious and almost like Caleb didn't want me to find something. Huh, seems a little sus, Caleb. What are you hiding, brother? What are you hiding? We know all the stuff about Zeke. You know, Dante's talked about this a lot. What Caleb does is invites impressionable people who often don't have like that great of financial background. And he knows that uh, because they're asking like, can I get gas money if I come on the show? That kind of stuff, you know? And at, then at the end of doing th their show, Caleb propositions them and says, hey, if you want to make some real money, what about... Only fans. I got a friend. Ding. <laughs> and spoiler alert, yes, I found some very interesting pieces of information we'll be discussing later in the video. Now, a few weeks ago, I was presented with some information that Caleb Hammer, a finance YouTuber with 1 million subscribers, had allegedly acted inappropriately with a guest on his show. I reached out to Caleb by email to get his side of the story, as these allegations were pretty severe, and I had no interest in making a video without getting everyone's side of the story. Caleb initially was very friendly over email and denied all the claims against him, and even told me to have a great day. <laughs> what a nice young man. Unfortunately, that attitude quickly changed when I didn't immediately accept what he had to say as fact. He told me he wasn't interested in doing a Zoom call because he wasn't interested in participating in the internet drama industry, which I found to be quite funny since, in my opinion, his channel is entirely based on drama around other people's finances. Dude, Scott continues to pummel Caleb for 32 minutes and 39 seconds straight. So let's just look at some of the highlights. <laughs> so just real quick to uh, to recap, Zeke is his like first accuser, basically, who's been public. And this is someone who's Dante has spoken with at length. And Dante trusts Zeke. Dante believes Zeke. If Dante does, I do. So, <clears throat> and also I've looked at this stuff too, but I don't just accept what Dante says without question. But, Here's Zeke. 
legal threats, let's get into the actual allegations against Caleb. First, we'll be talking about the original accuser of Caleb named Zeke, and then we'll talk about the further alleged text of Caleb I was given after. What many people don't know is that many of the early guests on Caleb Hammer's show were actually paid actors hired off of a website known as Backstage to appear on the show. Zeke was one of the actors that claimed- Yep, they don't tell you this a lot, but everything you see on YouTube, just pretend like it's probably fake like everything you see on TV at this point, because the CIA runs everything, they own everyone, that includes your YouTube influencers, all of them. ...to have found out about Caleb's show from the site, and from the listing Zeke showed me, the offer was quite generous, with an initial small $25 appearance fee, and then a 25% commission on all revenue generated from the episode for 12 months. Anticipated commission was believed to range from $2,500 to $8,000. And do you think the financial audit guy held true to his word and gave the percentage of the commission that he said was coming? Depending on video performance. Zeke, only 19 at the time, jumped at the chance to make to him what seemed like a large sum of money. Many people who have seen Zeke's episode have called him an insufferable brat and way worse things, but don't seem to understand that the attitude portrayed by Zeke isn't true to his normal personality from what I've seen talking to him, and it was designed to get as many views as possible to increase his chance of making more money and getting more screen time. This tactic ended up working, and Zeke appeared two more times on The Caleb Hammer Show, racking up a total of over 1 million views across the three episodes he appeared. Those view totals should have netted him a large sum of money if the commission payments seen in the job offer were paid. However, Zeke's claim to have only received a couple hundred dollars in total for his time on the show. It reminds me of, like, Diddy being like, Hey, Justin, at 16, you can have this Lambo. And then at 18, you get the house. But first, you gotta do me a little favor. <laughs> Anyway, let's just look at what he sent to Zeke, because it's gross. After he refused to pay, he gave him, like, piddly winks or whatever. He gave him, like, 20 bucks for gas money or 100 bucks or whatever. I think Zeke said he's gotten paid, like, a total of, like, 200 bucks for all of his appearances and stuff, which is like, Caleb, you cheap, brother. <laughs> but, so, after Zeke did his episode and he was like, hey, could I get the gas money to go home uh, that you promised me on my way here before I came here that I would get? And he's like, oh, okay, fine. But also here, I have another opportunity for you. Let me tell you. <laughs> Anything that I'm able to kind of link you to, you know, I definitely want to be helpful. The main reason I haven't wanted to have this conversation via text is, sorry, I had to burp. Um, one. Oh yeah, burping is absolutely Caleb's tell for when he's lying or nervous or anxious. Watch any of his stuff. When he's burping, man, he's stressing. <laughs> it's so funny. It's such a hilarious tell. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just. Uh, I just want to. Uh, I just want to. Uh, I just want to see if. Uh, if maybe I could uh, see you naked, and maybe do weirder stuff. I mean, my friend wants to. Sorry. <laughs> Fool. I'm not used to OnlyFans. <laughs> Straight up. Uh, it's not really my scene. Uh, you know, I'm a personal finance dude. Uh -huh. I don't really know anything about that. Uh, oh yeah, two, yeah. I'm straight. I'm like. 90% straight. I've definitely fooled around because I'm open-minded. Definitely. Uh, and, you know, when you get drunk, whatever. But, you know, so, and this is like a, for sure. you know, a man-on-man -man thing. Uh, but essentially, I think, well, from the conversation I had with him, the pay will be dependent on what you're willing to do, and what you're willing to do is set by you. So, what he would like to do. You're your own business. <laughs> you're, a, you own your own business. You're, you're <laughs> dude, come on. Dude, I can't with these capitalists anymore. They're all the same. To do, you guys make out. He would like to do that. What he, you guys, what he would like you guys to do, him fill you up. He would like to do that. You can say no about any of these. He would like to play with your dick. And see, that that's why I didn't want to type this out either, because that's, like, weird for me to say. I don't, you know, it's not like we're friends or anything, but that's what he wants to do. Dude, Caleb, if you did type this out and you didn't do a voice message, at least you could have had the benefit of the doubt and you could have said, oh, freaking Brandon stole my phone and typed that to Zeke as a joke. You're such a fool, truly, like deeply so dumb. Do you know what I mean? Like, this is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. You said, I see, this is why I didn't want to type it out. So here's a voice message of a thing that is basically only identifiable to me. <laughs> Bro, everyone knows the voice is our best option that we have. Ask Paul Y. Sopel. Maybe. One of the benefits of me talking to you today is that you'll see that maybe not everything is true that you've heard about me. Uh, the Murrow Building in Oklahoma City... With Oklahoma City being a counterattack... ...was attacked in, uh, I believe it was 95. Uh, the, the downside to that was uh, you, you had civilian casualties. Ask Krista McAuliffe, you know, the Challenger astronaut who definitely didn't die and now lives in Syracuse. Oh. 
Wow, the first teacher in space. I wonder what she's gonna... Uh, this is bad news. Hi, this is Sharon McAuliffe. I'm sorry I'm not available to take your call. Please leave your name and number, and I'll give you a call back as soon as possible. Thank you. Well, one of the things that has been really surprising is all of the, the publicity. And I was saying to my husband the other night, it's almost like I'm reading about somebody else, you know? <laughs> <laughs> What's well, a dream come true for you? Oh, it certainly is. Hi, this hmm. is Sharon McAuliffe. I'm sorry I'm not available to take your call. Please leave your name and number, and I'll give you a call back as soon as possible. Thank you. Oh, it's I'd like you. it. Thank you. Just like the rest of the crew that didn't die on the Challenger. So... Again, if you did this again, you know, so I'm not saying you would, like, and that this is totally not, like, a ring or, like, you know, a thing that you're working with with the FBI. This is not that. But if you did this again, I would just text or just say this stuff in person, you know, or have it come from an anonymous account, something that I wouldn't have, have any connection to, because what you're doing is very much on the border of criminal. <laughs> So, and this is just the stuff that we know and we're talking about. So if you ever went further than this, I would absolutely never leave a voice message like this, bro. <laughs> what? He wants to uh, give you a blowjob. Uh, oh, I was also told and confirmed with him that your face would be hidden, uh, blurred out and hidden. Your identity would be hidden. Um, um, and then if you wanted to give a blowjob, you could. Again, um, you would make more from that. Um, and, uh, you know, he would eat your butt. <laughs> and you would make more for that. You can say no as well. Uh, uh, you know, you could top him. He could top you. Whatever you're willing to do comes with more money. But you could literally do nothing. You could literally just lay back and let him just touch you for the video. Yeah, just have and fun. I guess, for some reason, his subscribers love that. Just have fun with me. I mean, my friend. And you'd get paid for it. So, really, that's what it is. And... You know, I, there's things that I think I don't feel comfortable talking about in this kind of situation, and I'd be happier to- Dude, what the hell else w could you talk about? <laughs> what? Bro, these people are depraved. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's like, I want to eat your butt. I want to- <laughs> I want to just completely take your head off and remove it from your body <laughs> so that you are just a freaking you aren't even a person. You're not an individual. You're just a body that's mine. <laughs> I mean, my friends. <laughs> Talk over in person. Um, maybe I'm just that kind of person. Uh, so you just let me know what you think. When that audio message was first leaked, a lot of people claimed it was fake. And in 2024, with it. How? How? AI sucks, bro. AI has a tell for everything. And audio especially. Dude, I am the king of frankenbiting. I could take I could make anyone say anything from like having ten minutes of recorded audio of them. Literally. I think I could do that with pretty much everyone. But if you AI if you do an AI voice, you can tell, bro. There's always weird little inflections and stuff. You know, it's the same thing with deep fakes. The eyes are always messed up, the mouth's always messed up, the hands are always messed up. So there's no way this is fake. Again, if Caleb just texted, though, he literally could have been like, someone stole my phone, and it would have been over. <laughs> but he didn't. He had to leave a voice message. Okay, so that was Zeke. There's a whole bunch more to his story. Please go watch Scott's video. It's incredible. <laughs> You'll love it. And now here's the second accuser. I share all of this with you to say that everything I know about Caleb, based on years of experience at communication with him, tells me that any of these allegations made against him are true. He believes wholeheartedly in his superiority to other people, which is why I believe he enjoys telling people about how wrong they are and need to do everything different with their finances. I think he gets off on feeling smarter and better than other people, and because of his frequent and unwanted sexual comments, I am not surprised in the least that someone has reported that he has made unwanted advances and slash or similar. He's a narcissist through and through, and he thinks his supposed intellectual and moral superiority make him immune to consequences or mistakes. Dude, okay, that's pretty sweet. I like that. Now let's see what Caleb has, was doing in Facebook chats. <laughs> focusing on. The first one that made several people uncomfortable was Caleb's comments about finding a 16-year-old boy hot. Now, in this chat group, everyone has nicknames instead of their actual name being used. I was told that Caleb picked many of these nicknames, but a few were picked by other members. Caleb was allegedly known as Super Ho Diddly Ho. So the user known as has sex all the time says, what's this hit beat you got playing? Super Ho responds with, smoking is gross. Uncut responds with, so is saying that 15-year-old boys are hot. Dancing says, oh damn. Super Ho responds with, 16. Uncut says, doesn't make your case any better. Super Ho responds with, haha, thinking from a picture is cute isn't bad. I don't think the person was cut because they are young. He had facial hair, like, come on. 
Uncut says, why screenshot? Because Superho had taken a picture of this guy's Snapchat of his 16-year-old friend. And Superho says, he hot, is gay, please. Uncut says, he's 16 and no, effing perv. Superho responds with shame. Uncut says, what was the age of consent in Michigan? Superho says 16. Uncut says, Texas is 17. And Superho says, shame. This is the message I sent to Caleb to confirm if they were real, which is when he replied that they were very out of context. Mm -hmm. I asked the informant if there was more context to the story, which he replied that there wasn't. To give a little bit more context, I, I reached out to Caleb for comment on this. He said this was taken very out of context, didn't give me any other info around that. So just anything you know around this, this particular incident. Yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> Uh, it's interesting that he'd say that, uh, particularly because I'm I'm not sure there's there's any more context uh, out of which it could be taken. And okay, it gets way worse. Hold on. In another post, it made it clear that Superho has no qualms about his desire for those young teenage boys. So in these chat messages, Superho posts a picture of another member's Instagram page that shows a young boy, and he asks who the guy's name is, and the other guy gives him his name, which I blocked out, and then Uncut says, Caleb's boy crush, and Superho responds with, I would like to personally stick my penis in a hole of his. Any hole will do. Thank you. Uncut responds with gross, and Superho responds with hot, let me. Uncut responds with dude, he's like 14. Superho responds with nah, probably around the other MCI member's age, if they were if they were there with him. Later, Superho says, and if fuck, 17, it's legal there, it is here. Uncut responds with Caleb, you're 23, that's gross. Superho says, not really, what I'm 50 and I find a sexy 21 year old, I could be a sugar daddy, I will do it, or her sugar daddy. Has sex all the time, responds with a uh, confused or upset meme. And then Superho says, both my grandparents sets are 10 years apart. Six years is nothing. I would shove that cock right down his throat where it belongs. Uncut responds with, it's something if they're underage. Superho says, anything under 16 is. Believe it or not, 17 is not under 16. Has sex all the time, responds with another meme. Uncut then says, still not an adult. Superho says, I fucked too many people when I was not an adult. Uncut says, just trying to save you from trouble. Superho says, is something- See, and guys, like- we know that this cycle of abuse is how these monsters are created, right? So it's not surprising to me that he's saying, I've fucked too many people when I was not an adult, you know? But at the same time, it does not give these people a pass. It doesn't, ever. It never gives them a pass, Drake Bell. You don't get to make a documentary and like wipe your hands clean of what you did, you weirdo. Same with you, Caleb. Thing is not against the law. There would be no trouble. Uncut responds with, I mean, you do you and do those boys. And Superho responds with, I do. Clearly did not agree with Superho's openly sharing his desire for teenage boys. Now to make it clear, I don't care what Caleb Hammer's orientation is. Yeah, that's the thing is these guys made it very clear over and over that they wanted him to stop doing this. And what does he do? He doesn't stop. He pushes harder. He keeps going. And then he goes and does this to post a screenshot of an adult video of two men having anal in the chat. This pissed off everyone in the group, and few of the younger members of the group were quickly removed from the chat before they saw the image, so they wouldn't have to be subjected to it. So in these chats right here, you can see several members are talking about different adult stars that they like. Superho talks about how Kyler Moss used to be his favorite adult star. I wish he didn't stop. He stopped a few years back. Now my favorite is Joey Mills. So these texts go on for a while until Uncut eventually says, it's all fun and games until Caleb posted a picture of Joey Mills getting effed. And then a few minutes later, uh, Super Ho actually posts an uncensored picture of Joey Mills and another guy, to which he responds, haha, changed it on you, it's Joey Mills topping. And then you can see pretty much everyone in the group is extremely ticked off that he decided to post this because it was clearly just a, a joke, and then he decided it would be hilarious to post uncensored adult content in this chat. And you can see several people asking him to remove it, and they removed other people in the group so they wouldn't be subjected to actually seeing this image. But yeah, guys, you see the pattern here. You understand what's going on, right? This seems like it is a pattern of behavior, right? Was always acting in a, just in, a, in in what I found to be a very uh, callous manner. Become very noticeable to me that Caleb was was very consistent about making things uncomfortable and expressed that he took pleasure in in sort of initiating those uncomfortable situations. There was a period of a, a few years in which I did not speak to him and which in which he was not part of those group chats. He returned to our primary composer group chat in I believe it was 2023, and it was as if nothing had changed uh, at that time. So he continued to make sexual references when they were completely unprompted or unwarranted. He would initiate arguments. He would not accept differing opinions. Uh, he would he would repeatedly insist on arguing his point, no matter how much anybody else would try to resolve an argument by agreeing to disagree. And so, just from from the first time I've known him throughout many many years, he has always been somebody who is interested in generating conflict, uh, is interested in making people uncomfortable, and who is I think I get the impression and have the opinion 
that uh, that he is um, a, a narcissistic individual who thrives off of the negative emotions he elicits in others. You know what, anonymous friend? I feel, in my opinion, inside my own thoughts, <laughs> allegedly in the same exact way that I think that he is a narcissist too, and he fits the pattern of one. And you know what? He seems like just a general bad guy. He also seems like he has ready access to bots. He also seems like he's not really that talented. Like, why is he here? Because it doesn't seem like he's really that good at financial audit. It just seems like he's kind of mean to people. And if you look at the people that he's mean to, it, it's almost like he's fitting a, a specific target group. You know? Hmm. I don't know. All I know is that if I find out that he is part of the propaganda wing of the United States <laughs> military, if he's what we've called a fed, you know, and I find that out, I'm going to be pissed. I promise you I'm going to be very pissed because why are all of these feds working with all of these influencers who, you know, like, I don't know, maybe Miranda Sings or people like that, you know? Why would all these feds be working with these people? I gotta ask. Like, bro, what the frick are you so scared of? I don't get it. The only hammers that I know of, you know, usually when people are scared like this, it's because they're hiding a big secret, like that their family is like, you know, some weird, weird family, you know, like, I'm like, what? Are we going to find out that he's related to Army Hammer? Like, does he not want us to know that he's cousins with Army Hammer or something? But there's no way that he could be related to someone like this because, dude, I, I remember this from the JFK files that Army Hammer's dad or grandpa or something was like a weirdo, like double agent in Russia or something. What the hell? But Caleb's not related to them, right? I don't think... I don't think he is. But yeah, guys, this is unrelated to Caleb Hammer, but do you know this stuff about Army Hammer? His great grandpa, his grandpa or great grandpa or something, his whole family, odd. But look, Armand Hammer, I think his grandpa, he was the chairman of Occidental Petroleum Corporation. Isn't it so weird that all these famous people are all like the descendants of petroleum dynasties, car manufacturer dynasties, slave trading dynasties, oil trading dynasties, stuff like that, you know? Isn't that weird that it's always these people and then their kids become actors? What the frick's up with that? <laughs> anyway, so, and of course he dealt with natural gas, crude oil, agricultural fertilizers and chemicals and metal treating and plating and design and construction of hotels and the utilization of solid waste. Uh, yeah. Anyway, these people, something was going on weird. They were in Russia and they were spies or there were spies here or something. Who the frick knows, dude, but... Interest in the Hammer family by various investigative agencies in the U.S. government started as early as 1921, in the year the Department of Justice advised the British that Armand Hammer was carrying message to the Soviet Union for Ludwig C.A.K. Martins, head of the Soviet trade mission, and self-styled Soviet ambassador to the U.S., who had been deported because of espionage activities in January 1920. In 1922, Armand Hammer was joined in the Soviet Union by his brother Victor. In 1923, by his father Julius, paroled from from prison. The Hammers who spoke Russian were ideally placed to participate in and benefit from the new economic program period. The NEP, isn't that the isn't that the government run like CIA program that like they were putting all the artists and and stuff under? Isn't that like the spy the spy program? Like everyone who was that who was under that was a fed isn't that something that like Gloria Steinem was into or whatever? The NEP sucked, right? We don't like the NEP. These dudes reached a frickin' an agree a trade agreement with Vladimir frickin' Lenin personally. So, and they were gonna trade his pencil factory, the asbestos mine, and his representation of U.S. and other Western firms to the U.S.S. in the U.S.S.R. What the frick? All these hammers got mines and oil and dude. Why do we let single families own everything? Why? Why, why, why? Why do we let this happen? Oh, it's because that's how the CIA wants everything to be. They want a bunch of little oligarchs. That's their whole plan for world domination is to give it to a bunch of little oligarchs, like the Hammers, people like that. But again, Caleb is not related to these guys because he hasn't said that before, you know? 
I've never heard him say that. General Alexander Orlov of the NKVD and the highest ranking member of the Soviet security services to defect to the West has stated that Armand Hammer was considered to be in the bag like they owned him. Hmm. So why would America let a spy from Russia come back to America? That's so freaking weird to me. In 1927, the police in London raided a Soviet trading firm called Arcos Limited and found espionage documentation proving that Arcos was in an important channel of communication to the United States for clandestine intelligence work and the Communist Party business. This in turn led the New York City police to raid the Moness Chemical Company in New York. They found a collection of secret documents revealing the activities of a clandestine Soviet network in the United States. Both the Arcos documents and the Moness documents showed that these firms were receiving considerable amounts of money from Dr. Julius Hammer in Moscow. During the Arcos raid, Dr. Julius Hammer's name and cryptonym were seized before the Soviet code clerk could destroy them. Convenient. The Allied American Corporation, known formerly as Allied Drug and Chemical Corporation, was a firm in which Dr. Julius Hammer was had acquired a controlling interest during World War I. Dude, all of these people own everything. It's the same as the Musks, the Teals, the frickin' Buyez or whatever, you know, frickin' Mr. Beast's girlfriend, Mr. Beast. Dude, they all are the same thing look they all own mines and they all own oil companies and they they all weirdly come out of frankfurt germany and their parents were freaking prison guards there and you know it's all the same bullshit i'm so sick of being gaslit bro we are not this stupid y'all are stupid we see you we see you you rats we see all of you rats AAC was the instrument via which the Hammer family handed its concessions to the USSR and also represented foreign concerns there. Again, so why are why is Army Hammer here if his grandpa was a frickin' spy for Russia? Why is Army Hammer an actor in America when his grandpa was a spy? Because usually it's the other way. But you know what? A lot of times the CIA will write bullshit documents like this because they want to make it look like this dude is a Soviet spy. You know, I don't know. I'm just saying when I see them throwing an oil and a mining person under the bus, I'm asking questions because that that ain't what the CIA do. The CIA do the opposite of that always. So when I'm seeing this. I'm seeing funny business. I don't know what the hell they're talking about, but to me, this is a double agent, not a Russian agent. And also just FYI, this document was released during the last tranche of JFK documents that is supposedly the last release that we're getting, even though there's still 2000 documents that they haven't released. But for some reason, this was like the last release was only like a couple hundred documents. Usually it's thousands at a time. And this was one of them. This was one of the documents that they had been holding on till from 1920, whatever. No, I mean, they're talking about the 1800s in here. From the 1800s until 2023, they were hiding this document. Why? Why? I want to know. I have to know. And I'm going to know. I think I know. I think we all know. I bet Caleb knows. Well, I'm just, I mean, he doesn't know anything about this Hammer family. It's separate. You know, a source of known reliability has stated that Armand Hammer had the job of paying Soviet propaganda agents in France under the cover of commercial trans transactions from 1929 until his departure for New York in 1934. He was also reported to have made a considerable profit by buying at a discount Soviet government three year notes from Western businessmen who despaired of ever getting paid. Joseph Finger alleged he had served as intermediary in Moscow when Armand Hammer demanded that the Soviets reimburse him for $75,000 expended for party work in New York during 1920. Finger stated that he was successful and named the recipients of the original expenditure, who included William Z. Foster, longtime head of the CPUSA. In, oh, CPUSA, you don't say, huh? 
What does that stand for? <laughs> in March 1952, Armand Hammer was questioned with regard to the $75,000. He explained it away by saying it was a finder's fee for making available to the Soviet government machinery ordered by the Tsarist government and stored in a Brooklyn warehouse. Armand Hammer denied that he ever engaged in any intelligence activity with the Soviets. Meanwhile, we have a 75-page FBI document here. <laughs> an ex-KGB officer has stated that an attempt was to be made by a KGB officer to reactivate Victor Hammer in the 1950s. The source indicated that, to his knowledge, this effort failed. Uh huh. When Armand Viktorovich Hammer visited the U.S. in 1968, he alleged that the purpose of his visit was to investigate the assassination of President Kennedy and to determine whether it was a conspiracy. He has visited his father in 1960, 1968, and 1972. But boys, anyway, <laughs> Nicole blasting on LinkedIn like it's TikTok. So I think instead of going to YouTube if we lose TikTok, let's all go to LinkedIn, okay? <laughs> but yeah, go on LinkedIn, talk about Caleb. Go on freaking YouTube, talk about Caleb. Stay on Tink Tonk and talk about Caleb. We need to talk about Caleb till he disappears because we need to Roger Clay him. He needs to go away. It's his time. Sorry, buddy, but... You did a lot of bad, and now you gotta pay, okay? Boys, go to frickin' type in reddit.com backslash r backslash creepy Caleb Hammer, and then hit join, okay? Because this is where everybody be clowning on Caleb and sharing all of their information. Like, frickin' ew, Caleb Hammer's audio message to Zeke. Yeah. <laughs> Really great insights from this guy on LinkedIn. Shout out, Victor. <laughs> Caleb Hammer is what you get when you cross Dave Ramsey and Harvey Weinstein. Choose your idols carefully. <laughs> Financial audit is a predatory production disguised as the answer to debt. Be wary of false profits. Hell yeah, Victor Volcano. You're awesome. When do y'all think Caleb will respond to the allegations? Well, he kind of has by saying that everyone's a liar. So, I don't know, it seems like he's not going to own up to it, you know? And, and, and yeah, that's it. So, he'll probably disappear soon. We know that the FBI is not going to do anything about it, because, let's be real, they're probably in on it. But, <laughs> in my opinion, as a joke, because I'm a goofy guy, see? I have tinfoil cat ears. Look, if you want to sue me, do it, but, I mean... <laughs> I'm a clown. Literally, I'm a big clown. And I don't think I've said any lies, unlike you, Caleb. <laughs> but yeah, dude, truly, you are so scared, and it worries me to the level of, like, Roger Clay, because he got really scared, too. And honestly, the only time you have to be scared of Nicole, I think, in my opinion, is when she busts out an ancestry tree on you, you know, and... As far as I know, she hasn't yet, you know? L let's check. Like, we, we're doing Colleen's. We're doing freaking Paul Y. Sopel's, Timothy McVeigh's. L who else? Murdaugh. Oh, oh, shit. Caleb. Okay, so maybe Nicole did start one. I hope this doesn't connect to where we think it might connect, in my opinion. And by that, I mean, it's not going to connect to that because... Dude, there's so many freaking hammers, especially rich hammers that get to be YouTube stars and actors. <laughs> but yeah, Caleb, you have nothing to worry about. Look, we've only gotten to your grandparents. So, yep. Anyway, bye, Caleb. I hope you have what you really should do is honestly just take it head on. You know, don't say it's your friend. Oh, that's my friend. The only way that anyone's ever going to believe you again is if you just say the truth, buddy. Just say what you and Brandon are up to. Why are you guys always talking about, like, Russia in a positive light? And, like, it seems like you guys talk about the Nancys a lot, too. It's so weird. I don't know. Like, all the time. If you asked for the Hitler Youth, you probably would have known what you were talking about. Ah. <laughs> uh, what? I'm recording. I don't joke about them all the time. It's not really that normal, you know, because when you talk about them that much, it feels like you're like idolizing them. You don't want to do that. I know you're not like that. You're not you're not one of those rats that whose family fled Nancy Germany after doing the 
the H cost and then went to Brazil? There's no freaking way, dude. That would be nuts. But I don't know. Only time will tell, buddy. Okay, bye. Oh, and boys, this is also totally unrelated. Not related at all to this, but we're I think we're finally getting down to it. Uh, there's a book that I need to put on everyone's radar because we're going to be reading this after Hidden Histories, but it's called The Bush Connection. Hitler's bodyguard, Commando Otto Scorzani, tells all. And then it says down here, the CIA is Hitler's fourth Reich in America. That couldn't be true. That couldn't be true. This dude is like named William Scherf or something. The Bush Connection book is a nonfiction history book that details the Bush family's connection to SS Nancy war criminals. It provides photos, names, and aliases of the CIA's favorite SS Nancy war criminal terrorist spook employees who are supposed to be dead according to the CIA, including never before published photos of Dr. Joseph Mengele, Reinhard Galen. That's the guy that Alan Dulles, literally, he was a Nancy, and then he waited like 10 years, and then he let him run the spy agency for Europe out of, like, France or Italy or something. Dude, it, it, I can't anymore. They, he, Alan Dulles let all of the Nancys run the government of West Germany, bro. They ran the police force. Nothing changed. Nothing but yeah, this alleges that George H.W. Bush wasn't actually born in America, and his name isn't really George H.W. Bush. It's really George A. Scherf Jr., the son of Dr. Nikola Tesla's illegal immigrant-born accountant. That sounds about as accurate as anything else at this point, you know? Truly. Something is going on with Tesla, the Trumps, the Bushes. Bro, I think time travel might be real. <laughs> Something's happening, but... Get this book, we're going to be reading it, and it's totally unrelated to Caleb. He's definitely not a person that's hiding like this, you know? Definitely not. Weirdos, stop saying that stuff. You nitwitches are crazed, but I love you. Okay, bye.